This is the Tuesday, July 7th edition of the Dark Illumination Report Extra. On today's episode, I'm going to be answering a question that comes from Jessica, who asked, Do I believe Satan calls people to his service? This is a Dark Illumination Report Extra with RJ Womack. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the podcast. I hope you're doing well. Hope you've had a good week so far, or the start of the week. On today's episode, I'm going to be answering a question from Jessica, who asked me whether or not I believe that Satanists or or Diabolists are called by Satan. I believe some Satanists or some Diabolists are called by Satan at a young age, and I believe some of them may have, in fact, served him in a past life. Now, I don't talk a lot about past lives here. In fact, I don't talk about it at all. And the reason I don't is because I find that when the topic of past lives come up, people are more interested in thinking about what they were in their past life or what they might have been, or they start saying crazy stuff like I'm a demon or I'm a I'm a demonic soul incarnate or I was Cleopatra or whatever their particular fetish is, right? So I don't talk about that, although I believe it is possible and I believe it does happen to some people. What I find is that if someone is truly called by Satan in this way, they're usually called at a very young age. The youngest person I know personally was somebody who was called at age seven. I personally felt the calling and the urge to serve Satan at age 12. And I know there have been people that are slightly older, slightly younger, that have felt that same call. And what distinguishes these people from other individuals you might find on the internet is that these people didn't come to Satan because they learned about it from some group or a friend. They felt a calling or a longing for Satan even before they read books about Satanism. And they sometimes they even got involved in rituals and doing things without even fully understanding what they were getting involved in. As I pointed out many times on this podcast, I got involved in Satanism before I even understood how to do a ritual. I didn't do a ritual. I prayed to Satan and I bowed my head and I prayed just like somebody would uh, to the Christian God. And I said, Satan, if you're there, show me you exist. And he did. He did things to prove to me that he existed. But I had no concept of the idea of using candles or or doing rituals or, or doing banishing rituals or calling the corners or anything like that. And that's typical of people that get involved in Satanism at an early age. They're called before they even fully understand spiritual concepts. It's almost as if they're remembering something from a previous life, as I said. The other thing that makes these individuals different from the people you see on the internet is that they tend to stay Satanist for their entire life. And even if by some chance they get they drift away from Satanism, it's usually because they're frustrated with the behavior of people involved in Satanism. It's not due to a lack of belief in Satan. That's the key difference. And even if they do drift away for a while, they tend to find their way back because they feel called by Satan and they feel like they're not doing their duty and honoring Satan if they don't come back. It's kind of a a very strange thing. But anyway, Um, That's one of the reasons why I'm so hard on the black metal crowd and the corpse paint crowd, because I've seen all kinds of people come and go in this religion. I've seen people make all kinds of claims about how dedicated they are to Satan, only to find them within two or three or four years kneeling at God's altar, right? The Christian God's altar. And so... Tattoos don't impress me. Black metal t-shirts don't impress me. Corpse paint doesn't impress me. You know, all your claims about, oh, I'd die for Satan. I'd sacrifice myself for Satan if he asked me to. All that crap means nothing to me because I've seen numbers of people do it and be gone within a year. So that doesn't impress me. What impresses me is whether someone lives by their satanic principles, whether somebody practices their rituals on a daily basis, whether somebody is raising their kids to believe in the satanic philosophy or the diabolistic philosophy. You know, that's what impresses me. It's not what you say, it's how you live. And it also doesn't impress me if you're really gun ho and you've only been a Satanist for six months. Yeah, 
That's typical. What will impress me is if I meet you 15 years later and you're still as devoted to Satan as you always were, you're still practicing your rituals, you're still doing mass every week, you're still teaching your kids to believe in Satan, and you still believe in it yourself, and you live it every day. And when you make decisions in your life, you base them on satanic principles and you ask Satan for his guidance in your life. If you've been doing that and I meet you 15 years later and you're still doing that, then I'm impressed. I'm not impressed by somebody who's been in Satanism for a year and they act like they're so devoted because within two or three years, they won't even act like they knew what Satanism was. They won't even, they'll pretend like they were never even a Satanist at all. And I've seen this happen so often and it's become so common and it is so common that I don't even pay attention to it anymore. So when people write me and they're all excited and say, oh, I'm so devoted to Satan and oh, Brother Nero, can you help me? And, and I just kind of look at it and go, yeah, I wonder if you'll still be devoted within a year. Thank you for listening to the Dark Illumination Report podcast. For the latest news headlines, show information and more, go to rjwomack.com. That's R-J-W-O-N-A-C-K dot com. <laughs>